decided I wanted to become a filmmaker uh, when I watched uh, Fellini's Eight and a Half. Actually, it was a, it was a, I fell in love with 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 the the job of being a director. The film is about is about the story of a, of a film director. So it was a very strong uh, calling for me watching Fellini's film. Uh, but I had been interested in in documentary filmmaking and in, in filmmaking through uh, my years in university. I, I studied in political science, so I remember watching Manufacturing Consent by Mark Akbar and being, being really impressed with, uh, with the power of the medium and what we could achieve with uh, documentary filmmaking. So I guess it, it, was, it has been um, preparing itself within for a few years, and then uh, at the end of my university degree, I, I, I had a clear vision that I I wanted to become a filmmaker. Surviving Progress is um, is a, a film that was inspired by Ronald Wright's uh, best-selling essay called A Short History of Progress. Um, it, it was a very long process making this film. Uh, I think from the beginning of development to the world premiere at TIFF two years ago, uh, there was a span of six and a half years. So. For me, it's it's by far the biggest project I ever uh, worked on so far in my uh, young career. Um, you know, as a young director, uh, it's an honor to to be uh, asked to direct such such a fantastic project. Uh, it it allowed me to conduct researches on on history topics: the fall of the Roman Empire, the the fall of the Mayas, uh, on the economic crisis, on technology. Uh, on on moral and ethics, so f for me it was it's a privilege to to have been able to 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 be to being paid uh, to research these issues, uh, and I think the film definitely transformed me as a as a, as a filmmaker, but also as an individual as a citizen. Uh, I think I, I I was very much naive about the world we we live in before uh, starting working on that picture. And uh, all that amount of research and the conversation with my, uh, with my colleague Harold Crooks and, and with our producer Mark Akbar uh, and our executive producer Martin Scorsese really uh, helped me to, 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 to grow as an individual and to understand the mechanism of our, of our civilization and, and the mechanism of, our, of, of what is progress and how progress has become this, this economic ideology that basically is hijacking everything else uh, in our societies. Uh, it's hijacking democratic institutions, it's hijacking uh, any kind of, of, of real progress, of moral progress that we could have expected by now after 200 years of industrialization. So, uh, you know, I could, I could talk about progress for so, for so long, but it, it was definitely a, a major experience for me as a filmmaker. I, I'm now a, a fiction filmmaker too. I've, I've directed my first feature film that is just about to, to be released. And, uh, but I will definitely continue to make documentaries and, and social documentaries. Um, why uh, am I interested in, in doing that is, is a good question. I guess it, it has something to do with just values and, and the way I see the world and the way I see, uh, again, uh, my experience on surviving progress helped me so much to understand the world we live in and to understand the, the many uh, situations of exploitation and of injustice and, and it just feels natural to, to tell these stories and to reveal the mechanisms of our, of our societies to a wider audience that might not be, uh, that might not have time to, to dig, uh, you know, the information themselves and to be uh, responsible citizens. Um, yeah, no, just, just out of outrage also, you know, uh, wh the, the more you understand the world we live in, the more outraged you become and, and the more cynical you can, you can become too. Uh, so documentary filmmaking definitely helps me to, to, um, to, to, to what's the word, to kind of export that outrage uh, uh, in, into a film <laughs> that people will connect to. Uh, and yeah, no, uh, I guess it, 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 it's something, it's, you know, it, it's a predisposition for, for, 
to be interested in social issues and to, to tell these stories. I, I feel that traditional media don't necessarily uh, do their jobs anymore and don't reveal uh, these systems of exploitation that I was talking about. Uh, and thus, it, I, I, I see that documentary filmmakers nowadays have replaced uh, traditional journalists in a way in, 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 in doing some investigative work and in doing... Uh, in making social documentaries that that about subject matters that would not be covered uh, that would not be covered otherwise the intersection of art and politics well you know that that's that's our job as documentary filmmakers to tr in in some cases you know for a, a film like surviving progress that i directed uh the subject matter is is yes political it's also economical it's socio-economical, I should say, and even anthropological. Um, and the challenge, as film, uh, f the challenge uh, for us as filmmakers is to find a way to share these, these intense ideas to a large public in a way that is not too didactic, that is not too uh, arid. Uh, and thus, uh, my job as, as a filmmaker is to try and uh, well, it's also my pr preference is to try and uh, uh, bring some artistic vision, some you know, cinematic vision. Uh, in the case of Surviving Progress, I think there's something like uh, 15 interviewees and they're all super intelligent and, and the density of the ideas shared is pretty high. So my job was to uh, create a cinematic interludes in which the viewer could uh, could, you know, take some time to reflect on what he, what he, he or she just heard. Um, and so I think art, uh, in this case, in the case of documentary filmmaking, is, is crucial uh, if, you know, if we want to, uh, if we want to, yes, pass a political message, but at the same time, do it uh, in a cinematic way that will also uh, create a, an interesting atmosphere for the viewer and will not be a, just a TV documentary. I'm, I'm now releasing uh, my first feature fiction film uh, called L'Autre Maison, Another House. It's about to come out in theaters in a few days. Uh, but I, I, I'm also uh, terribly interested in, in documentaries and I want to continue uh, making these big picture uh, documentaries. Uh, the, the one I can tell you about is uh, based on a best-selling essay by Dr. Samantha Nutt. She's a humanitarian doctor from Toronto, and sh she founded this NGO called uh, War Child. And she just wrote this really fantastic essay called Damned Nations. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's an essay about her views uh, on the humanitarian world and how you know, problematic it, it has become. Uh, and she also discusses the uh, arms sales and the whole roots of weapons. And, and basically the book is about how it's, a, it's, it's about the hypocritical stance of Western government who on the one hand, uh, on the one hand send, uh, you know, aid and, and contribute to UN missions to help countries that are in perpetual war state and uh, on the other hand uh, sell a, a tremendous amount of, of arm to these same developing countries. So there's, there's, a, there's a total hip, hypocritical stance here that is rarely discussed in traditional media uh, and so I'm, I'm very much interested in, in, in covering that in, in, in the next documentary. Um, it, it's also going to be uh, discussing the, the, the mechanism of the UN uh, Security Council. Uh, you know, w again, uh, with regards to weapon sales, uh, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council sell for 75% uh, of the weapons worldwide, 90% of, of these two developing countries in, in state of war. So there's, there's something totally uh, wrong. <laughs> with uh with this situation and and in 2013 i think it's it's totally unacceptable and i, I think most people mo even most educated people on the planet don't even know that uh and and that's not you know it's not a by accident uh and so i, I want to discuss the, the the propaganda means uh within the media and within the education world that provide 
you know, most citizens uh, from understanding these issues. So that's one project. I'm also working on another project with uh, filmmaker Richard Brouillette, who did the remarkable film L'Encerclement, about the history of neo uh, about the history of neoliberalism. Uh, and so Richard has has um, developed a project on the world food crisis that I that he asked me to direct. So I'm also working on that. Th these are two projects that are. Uh, that are totally logical for me to, to, to work on after uh, surviving progress. The distribution aspect of documentaries is still, uh, is still very difficult, uh, not, not only in Canada but worldwide. I mean, uh, we've seen it in Canada recently, uh, th there's been uh, massive cuts in, in art funding, uh, and these cuts uh, have been um, have been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, they've been felt mostly by the, the documentary world, unfortunately. It was hard to finance a documentary, it's even harder now. Um, and, and uh, you know, documentary filmmakers relied a lot on broadcasters to finance their project, and the broadcasters are also uh, suffering uh, from cuts uh, from, uh, from, the set, from the federal government, from the Harper government which complicates the whole financing of, of documentaries. It's, it's much, much harder to, to finance. And, and the distributors are, again, uh, mostly interested in fiction films. And they, they don't give a lot of money to documentary projects, even from renowned documentary filmmakers. So yes, I'd like to see changes. I, I just don't know how, you know, it would have to, it would have to, uh, to come from the from the politics side, I mean, they, they would have to 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 trigger uh, some some kind of, of new funding um, options for for documentaries. I mean, my hope is that there are new ways to distribute documentaries through the internet, and the new companies are emerging to uh, to help independent filmmakers. But then again, uh, it, it's frustrating because I've lived both. Uh, you know, I've lived the experience of directing both a big documentary and a big fiction film, uh, and it's frustrating how much money there is in fiction compared to documentaries, and because I, f I think documentaries are, 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 are fundamental to, to societies uh, nowadays, and yeah, I'd like to see many changes, but uh, I think, you know, again, we're, we're very lucky to live in Canada where, uh, where the arts are funded by, by our different uh, levels of government. But I feel there's an inconsistency in the uh, percentage of money that goes to fiction uh, compared to documentary. And there, there's a gap that needs to be, to, to, to shrink, you know, and, and so, I don't know how to go about it, how to, to, to create pressure towards government, but I'd, I'd like to see some, some changes. Well, I think Cinema Politica uh, is doing a fantastic job uh, here in Montreal, but now I think that, that their network has, has grown to, to other cities and even possibly other countries. Uh, and I, I think it's a it's fantastic initiative for, for, stu for university students to be able to, to see uh, great documentaries that they would have missed uh, in theaters because we know nowadays documentaries don't stay in theaters for very long so it, it's very important to have these uh, alternative networks of distribution and in the case of Cinema Politica they're, they're doing a great job of um, first of all pinpointing these important films to be important documentaries to be shown to students but also inviting uh, the directors to, to have debates and conversation with with the students, with the audience, uh, and also bring these films to different uh, parts of the country that would not even have, uh, have had access to the, the theatrical release of, of these films. So it's, it's a, it's a fundamental, uh, fundamental job that they're doing, and uh, I wish uh, more initiatives like that would, uh, would emerge.